So with, with great pleasure, and uh, you have made rightly, rightly the point that seven years ago, AMR was not known at all. And our goal when we launched the World Sepsis Day movement in the first World, World Sepsis Day in 2012 was that in 10 years, everybody would know what sepsis is because, as you will see in a second, the burden and the killing burden of sepsis is even higher than AMR. And if we do not learn to bring these two issues together, we, ha we will have a problem. So thank you so much to, of being here. And because I am so proud that so many high-level policymakers and parliamentarians are here following the quote of Rudolf Virchow, what we as physicians can do is only to recommend to the policymakers what the problems are. But the problems can be solved only under your leadership with our advice and support. And this is what I think it's all about. And that's why I'm so grateful that some wonderful and great people, and Hermann Gruyer was mentioned already, but also it was the Chancellor Minister who became later a Chancellor Minister. At this point, he was uh, a Secretary of State in the BMVF. But his background is an intensivist, an anesthesiologist, and he knew, he understood that this is a problem. But at this time, and this was at 2012, sepsis was not on the agenda, nor of the Global Burden of Disease Report, in no healthcare system, etc., etc. And also Margaret Chand, of course, and Achim Steiner, who very early understood that we won't achieve the targets of the 2020 and now 2030 goals for the sustainable goal, uh, goals, the development goals, if we are not successful in the fight against sepsis. And nobody knew at this time that sepsis is the most severe complication for, from which can derive and being incited by any infection. It's not just wound infections, which was a misconception. And it's that it's the host response against these infections which makes these terrible tissue and organ dysfunctions. And we are here because what Sir William Osler, the leading physician of his time, set out there that humanity has three great enemies, war, hunger, and fever, and by far the most terrible is fever, a synonym in some way uh, of sepsis. And unfortunately, it's still true. If you look at the numbers, and these are numbers put together by the authors of the Global Burden of Disease Report in the meanwhile, last data such as 30 million. We have to add the millions, and this is also of COVID-19 deaths, because if you die from a vir viral infection, you die also by the overwhelming host response, which means by the different sepsis, etc. And we have now also data on AMR and data on cancer, and no, everybody knows it. And in this recent publication, where our good friend and colleague in the meanwhile, Moshin Nachafi, who works with the Institute of Health metrics and evaluation, which is funded by Bill Gates, but because when Bill Gates started his anthropologic, uh, and, uh, um, anthropologic um, activity, he wanted to know where to invest best, but there were no data at this time, and that's why he founded this, and, it, and, and, and Moshen presented this data on our side events along the United Nations uh, meeting in September. It's 13.6 million deaths, 8.8 .8 million deaths from in bacterial infections, 5.0 million associated, and 1.72 million deaths uh, attributable to, to sepsis. So it's confirmed that we, we so far 
we have not addressed a major health issue. So, and this is also, we are here because sepsis disproportionately affects 85% of mankind who are living in these deep blue countries and regions of the world. And in some of these countries, the incidence is above 4,000 per 100,000 population. And we can really make a difference. If you look what happened in the US by implementing and starting at 1900, 40 states have health departments. You see that over time, by public health measures, but also by research for developing vaccination, chlorination of water, sanitation, there was this decline only interrupted by the influenza pandemic. You see this spike here, first use of phenylicine. And this had unfortunately resulted to the notion by quite a lot also of high profile health authorities that the book of infectious diseases can be closed. And this is not true. If you look at this figure, and this is data from the CDC, and you find it on the website also of the Staunton Foundation, who made the point that sepsis kills 350,000 inhabitants of the US, compared with 60,000 from opioids, breast cancer, 42,000 AMR, 35,000, 15,000 by AIDS. So that's a problem. And sepsis hits not only, it hits everybody. And we are, must understand this, uh, that is irrespective of gender, of region where you live, whether you are rich or poor. And it also, unfortunately, or hits uh, high profile people. And so it was poorly understood stood that also COVID-19, I mentioned it already, may result uh, in sepsis. And we have set this out already in the, port, on, in the report, which came along by WHO uh, with the sepsis resolution. And we, you hear a speaker later who just now published this book, COVID-19 viral, viral sepsis. And why is it important, sorry. Why, and what we learned in the pandemic, that there's also a positive effect by dampening, by treating sepsis with compounds who impair, who dampen the immune response. This is one study published, uh, uh, supported also by the BMF from Germany. This is a study where the senior author was our good friend Evangelos Cimarellis from the Hellenic Sepsis Society. And you see here, these are the patients who have no bad sequelae after sepsis. These are the patients who died in red with placebo and with this compound, highly statistically Sorry. significant. Thank you very much. <laughs> and and this, is, this resulted in FDA and EMA emergency use authorization. And also for this compound, which comes from my hometown, Jena, and the CEO of this company run my ICU. And it's fully known now, and I have a conflict of interest because I brought them uh, uh, along and helped them a little bit. So, and this is recent data from Massachusetts done by colleagues from Harvard who measured, because they all have electronic health records, and what they found that between 2020 and between 2022, 8% of all hospital admissions were due to non-COVID sepsis. 2% were from COVID sepsis. Again, three to four times more deaths from a disease and a condition nobody knows about. And this is not acceptable. And the measures are this decline, which is published of the mortality of ICU treated patients in Australia between 2000 and 2012, just happened because not using the word sepsis, but realizing 
that in also in their hospital system there are unnecessary, unnecessary deaths because on the wards deteriorating patients with sepsis but not only with sepsis have unnecessarily died and they took action. They are no longer satisfied since the time 2000 a hospital which does not systematically educate nurses and medical staff to recognize early deteriorating patients and to have what they call medical emergency teams. We in Germany still are prioritizing, and I'm an anesthetist and it was my responsibility to run to the, to the wards when there was a cardiac arrest. You see, this is not unacceptable. You can make a difference. And what we also can, from, can learn from Australia, here the mortality rate after introduction was below, close to 15%. But they did not stop. They, after founding an, a sepsis alliance also there, they did quality improvement initiatives, education, and this is only <coughs> a few months published. Following the sepsis pathway, even there was only 4.6% in this hospital. By this campaign, mentioning and using the word think sepsis and act fast, this number, who did the right things in the very first hour, increased to 78%. This went along with a decrease of mortality, which is pretty low, with 71 to 11.3%. Hospital bed use still declined by to 3,500 days, reduction of costs 11.7 Australian dollars by an investment of 1.7 million just to install this campaign. So a return in investment of 600%. So our policymakers and our health authorities need to understand this. And lastly, we are very grateful that our Minister of Health during the G7 presidency, got sepsis, put it up uh, in the common communique. And they, say they committed to intensify the efforts to early detection and also to look for the synergies between AMR and, and sepsis. And lastly, they also were committed to push the implementation of the WHO sepsis resolution. Unfortunately, the following G20 and G7 declarations, they won't, you won't find the word sepsis in their declarations and in their communiques. This is <coughs> what we need to, to overcome, and that's why I'm so pleased that so many high-level policymakers are here. Jointly, we can make a difference, and I encourage, encourage you that you share our vision and we can learn from Nelson Mandela. So it always seems impossible until it's done. And it's doable. It has been demonstrated in quite a number of countries. I have been in Sweden. And we will hear very shortly somebody from, from Sweden. It's also not possible, a perfect there. But their mortality rate is 15%. And there's still option to improve there. I thank you very much for your kind attention.